Hey, good afternoon, brothers and sisters. I want to welcome you back to the Beacon of Light. I am Brother Anthony. Today is uh, March 31st. It is uh, Wednesday, March 31st, 2021. It is about 3.01 p.m. And today we're going to finish up the book of Matthew, chapter 13. Um, <clears throat> if you watched the last video, uh, this is Jesus speaking in parables, and the reason he spoke in parables was to uh, to let those people who uh, who are a part of his kingdom know the truth, and those who uh, are ignorant be kept from from knowing the mysteries of the kingdom. In a uh, Chapter, 12, uh, chapter 13, verse 12, it says, Whoever has, to him more will be given. And whoever does not have, um, whatever he does have will be taken away. You know, and uh, I believe that this is God's spirit. If you have God's spirit in you, you know, more, more will be given, more will be revealed. And uh, what Jesus was explaining here in this uh, chapter through these parables was... Uh, It says here uh, in my little notes, just as the failure to respond to truth brings blindness, so a positive response is rewarded with further understanding. This principle is applied to the leaders of Israel with fulfillment of many Old Testament prophecies. The leaders' rejection of the message of Jesus further blinded them to the spiritual nature of Christ's kingdom. Parables then became Jesus' effective tools for both revealing truth to the faithful and concealing it from those who would reject it. So, uh, we're going to go ahead and read from verse 24 to the end. And he is starting off with another parable. The last video was about the, the parable of the, the sower. And we're going to get into the wheat and the tares, the parable of the mustard seed, the parable of the leaven, the parable um, of hidden treasure, the parable of the dragnet. So let's go ahead and jump right into it. I hope everybody is blessed. I hope that you are continuing to get into your word. You know, today I'm trying out my new webcam. Um, <clears throat> I have a, a backdrop coming into the uh, in the mail. You know, and uh, just trying to step up my my video game so that uh, my videos will be better to look at. Instead of looking at my ugly mug. But um, as long as we continue to, to understand God's word. Continue to uh, to soak up the word of God like a sponge. We're able to uh, learn how to apply it. And uh, learn how to better walk this Christian walk. So I read like I always read. I start off with the New King James Version. And then I follow it up with the Message Bible for a deeper and better understanding for those of us who need it. Let's go ahead and jump right into the Word. Matthew chapter 13 verse 24. It says, Another parable he put forth to them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is like a man who sowed good seed in his field. But while men slept, his enemy came and sowed tares among the wheat and went his way. But when the grain had sprouted and produced a crop, then the tares also appeared. So the servants of the owner came and said to him, Sir, did you not sow good seed in your field? How then does it have tares? He said to them, An enemy has done this. The servant said to him, Do you want us then to go and gather them up? But he said, No, lest while you gather up the tares, you also uproot the wheat with them. Let both grow together until the harvest. And at the time of the harvest, I will say to the reapers, First, gather together the tares, and bind them in bundles, and burn them. But gather the wheat into my barn. Another parable he put forth to them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed, which a man took and sowed in his field, which indeed is the least of all the seeds. But when it is, when it is grown... It is greater than the herbs and becomes a tree, so that the birds of the air come and nest in its branches. 
Another parable he spoke to them, The kingdom of heaven is like leaven, which a woman took and hid in three measures of meal, till it was all leavened. All these things Jesus spoke to the multitude in parables, and without a parable he did not speak to them, that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by the prophet, saying, I will open my mouth in parables. I will utter things kept secret from the foundation of the world. Then Jesus sent the multitudes away and went into the house. And his disciples came to him, saying, Explain to us the parable of the tares of the field. He answered and said to them, He who sows the good seed is the Son of Man. The field is the world. The good seeds are the sons of the kingdom, but the tares are the sons of the wicked one. The enemy who sowed them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the age, and the reapers are the angels. Therefore, as the tares are gathered and burned in the fire, so it will be at the end of this age. The Son of Man will send out his angels, and they will gather out his kingdom, all things that offend, and those who practice lawlessness and will cast them into the furnace of fire. There will be wailing and gnashing of teeth. Then the righteous will shine forth as the sun in the kingdom of their father. He who has ears to hear, let him hear. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden in a field, which a man found and hid. And for joy over it, he goes and sells all that he has and buys that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant seeking beautiful pearls, who, when he had found one pearl of great price, went and sold all that he had and bought it. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a dragnet that was cast into the sea and gathered some of every kind, which, when it was full, they drew to the shore, and they sat down and gathered the good into the vessels, but threw the bad away. So it will be at the end of the age. The angels will come forth, separate the wicked from among the just, and cast them into the furnace of fire. There will be wailing and gnashing of teeth. Jesus said to them, Have you understood all these things? They said to him, Yes, Lord. Then he said to them, Therefore, every scribe instructed concerning the kingdom of heaven is like a householder who brings out his treasure, things new and old. Verse 53. Now it came to pass when Jesus had finished these parables that he departed from there. When he had come to his own country, he taught them in their synagogue so that they were astonished and said, Where did this man get this wisdom in these mighty works? Is this not the carpenter's son? Is not his mother called Mary and his brothers James, Joseph, Simon, and Judas? And his sisters, are they not all with us? Where then did this man get all of these things? So they were offended at him. But Jesus said to them, A prophet is not without honor, except in his own country, and in his own house. Now he did not do many mighty works there, because of their unbelief. Man. It's pretty self-explanatory, right? The kingdom of heaven is a kingdom of truth, is a kingdom not made for the wicked, is a kingdom for those who love God, for those who keep his commandments, for those who accept Jesus, for those who listen, for those who follow, for those who yearn for a, a deeper relationship with God, for those who realize that living in this flesh, given given uh, in to the desires of this flesh, are not godly. That uh, they are works of, of of our enemy, you know, evil desires, um, wanting things, wanting more, wanting having greed, uh, doing drugs, and and all these things that that come with our flesh, you know, these things aren't of God. But the truth is that. Uh, that in the end of the age, God is going to separate. God is going to separate the good from the bad, the good fruit from the bad fruit. You know, his people from the people who aren't his people. 
you know, and, uh, and, man, the word just sticks out so much. I'm going to go ahead and read it from the Message Bible so we can get another another point of view, another under, better understanding, and uh, then we'll talk about it a little more. Matthew 13, verse 24. He told another story. God's kingdom is like a farmer who planted good seed in his field. That night, while his hired men were asleep, his enemies sowed thistles all through the wheat and slipped away before dawn. When the first green shoots appeared and the grain began to form, the thistles showed up too. The farmhands came to the farmer and said, Master, that was clean seed you planted, wasn't it? Where did these thistles come from? He answered, Some enemy did this. The farmhands asked, Should we weed out the thistles? He said, No. If you weed the thistles, you'll pull up the wheat too. Let them grow together until harvest time. Then I'll instruct the harvesters to pull up the thistles and tie them in bundles for the fire, then gather the wheat and put it in my barn. Another story, God's kingdom is like an acorn that a farmer plants. It is quite small as seeds go, but in the course of years it grows into a huge oak tree and eagles build nests in it. Another story, God's kingdom is like yeast that a woman works into the dough for dozens of loaves of barley bread and waits while the dough rises. All Jesus did that day was tell stories, a long storytelling afternoon. His storytelling fulfilled the prophecy, I will open my mouth and tell stories. I will bring out into the open things hidden since the world's first day. Jesus dismissed the congregation and went into the house. His disciples came in and said, explain to us that story of the thistles in the field. So he explained. The farmer who sows the pure seed is the son of man. The field is the world. The pure seeds are subjects of the kingdom. The thistles are subjects of the devil. And the enemy who sows them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the age, the curtain of history. The harvest hands are angels. The picture of thistles pulled up and burned is a scene from the final act. The Son of Man will send his angels, weed out the thistles from his kingdom, pitch them in the trash, and be done with them. They are going to complain to high heaven, but nobody is going to listen. At the same time, ripe, holy lives will mature and adorn the kingdom of their Father. Are you listening to this? Really listening? God's kingdom is like a treasure hidden in a field for years and then actually accidentally found by a trespasser. The finder is ecstatic. What a find! And proceeds to sell everything he owns to raise money and buy that field. Or, God's kingdom is like a jewel merchant on the hunt for exquisite pearls. Finding one that is flawless, he immediately sells everything and buys it. Or, God's kingdom is like a fishnet cast into the sea catching all kinds of fish. When it is full, it is hauled onto the beach. The good fish are picked out and put in a tub. Those unfit to eat are thrown away. That's how it will be when the curtain comes down on history. The angels will come and cull the bad fish and throw them in the garbage. There will be a lot of desperate complaining, but it won't do any good. Jesus asked, are you starting to get a handle on all this? They answered, yes. He said, then you see how every student well trained in God's kingdom is like the owner of a general store who can put his hands on anything you need, old or new, exactly when you need it. When Jesus finished telling these stories, he left there, returned to his hometown, and gave a lecture in the meeting house. <coughs> he stole the show, impressing everyone. We had no idea he was this good, they said. How did he get so wise, get such ability? But then in the next breath, they were cutting him down. We've known him since he was a kid. He's the carpenter's son. We know his mother Mary. We know his brothers, James and Joseph, Simon and Judas. All his sisters live here. Who does he think he is? They got all bent out of shape. But Jesus said a prophet is taken for granted in his hometown and his family. He didn't do many miracles there because of their hostile indifference. 
man. Let's go ahead and uh, read some of this footnote that we have here. The kingdom of heaven is like. This phrase introduces new truth regarding God's coming kingdom. The introductory formula does not mean that the kingdom is to be exactly identified with a man, or a mustard seed, or leaven. It simply means that some truth regarding the kingdom is found in the story. A parable was primarily intended to teach one point, not to be picked apart to find meaning in all of its details. In verse 25 where it says, His enemy came and sowed tares. Tares closely resemble wheat but are poisonous to human beings. They are indistinguishable from wheat until the final fruit appears. Farmers would weed out tares just before the wheat harvest. Until Christ returns, both genuine believers and counterfeits will be allowed to remain together. And we can see that in today's day and age. You know, uh, until Jesus comes back, that's when the final... the final... Uh, separation is going to happen. God's going to take his kingdom and the rest who uh, who had a chance to, to accept him. And, and I believe that uh, that this is a, a picture of what many people call the rapture. You know, uh, growing up, I, I had a, a friend named, named Julio who his mom used to, used to every, every chance she got, she told us about God's rapture, about him uh, coming to to separate the the good from the bad, you know, and uh, and I think that's where that story derives from is Matthew chapter 13. It says here, the kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed. The parable of the wheat and tares reveals that the kingdom of heaven will be preceded by an age in which good and evil coexist. The parable of the mustard seed affirms that during that time period. The number of people who will inherit the kingdom will be very small at first. But though it begins like the smallest of seeds, the nucleus will enjoy growth completely out of proportion to its initial size. The birds of the air do not represent evil as they do in the parable of the soils. In the Old Testament, a tree large enough to support nesting birds was considered prosperous and healthy. You can see Psalm 104.12. Ezekiel 17.23, Ezekiel 31.6, and Daniel 4.12. The kingdom, though having only a small number of people at the beginning of the age, will ultimately be large and prosperous. The kingdom of heaven is like leaven. Although leaven sometimes symbolizes evil, here the kingdom of heaven is being compared to the dynamic char character of yeast. When yeast is kneaded into the dough, it expands by itself, rather than being powered by outward armies or organizations. The kingdom of God will grow by an internal dynamic, the Holy Spirit, overcoming all opposition. As the parable of the mustard seed addresses the extent of the kingdom's growth, this parable concerns the power and process of its growth. Right. The kingdom of heaven is like a treasure hidden in a field. The parable of verses 44 through 52 concern kingdom values and responsibilities. They are especially directed at believers. The first two are recorded by Matthew alone and appear to belong together. Stripped of their grand dreams of an immediate powerful kingdom of David and facing the prospect of much opposition on all sides, the disciples were forced to count the cost. In the first story, a man stumbles on a treasure trove, which he makes every effort to obtain. The truth being taught in this immense value of the kingdom, was far out, which far outweighs any sacrifice or inconvenience one might encounter on earth. The kingdom of heaven is like a merchant seeking beautiful pearls. The second parable on kingdom values was evidently given to further underscore Jesus' optimism for the despondent disciples. His double encouragement indicates their great need at that time. This parable has a slightly different emphasis. Though the first individual found his treasure by accident, 
the second founded by diligent search. No matter how a person is led to Christ's kingdom, its values and delights will be beyond estimation. Man, that is like opening up so much, uh, so much knowledge. Alright, one more. So the kingdom of heaven is like a dragnet. The last two parables speak of kingdom responsibilities for disciples. First, Jesus describes a large sea-in net, which would encircle a large area and drag the bottom of a lake. Such a net gathers fish of every kind without discrimination. Similarly, the responsibility of disciples would be to catch as many fish of every kind as possible. The work of judging or ferreting out the false catch, however, is a job that the disciples are neither called nor equipped to do. That work is assigned to angels at Christ's return. This reminds me, you know, uh, we invite everybody. Everybody's welcome to come to House of Rest. We invite people to come to House of Rest. We invite people to... Uh, to accept Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. You know, many people are in different walks of life. Many people are in different uh, areas of their of their faith, and uh, and it's up to them if they want to continue uh, living a, a prosperous life in Jesus Christ. But for me, as a as a student of of the teacher, it's not my job to say who's going to stay in the kingdom and who's not. It's not uh, our, our, yes, it is our job to, to exhort one another daily, to, to, to let others know that we love them, but in the end, God's going to make the final cut. He's going to make the final decision on who stays and who goes. You know, uh, those who, who dedicate their lives, those who accept his sacrifice, those who continue to, uh, to to live with kingdom principles, you know, those who have a heart and a love for God, I believe those are going to be the ones who are going to go home with our Lord. But even we know this this Christian walk is not easy, you know. Uh, because there are many people who profess that they love Jesus, but their hearts are far from Him. There are many people who uh, proclaim to be the the biggest Christian on the block, you know, because I I, I wear these T-shirts and I and I listen to this certain kind of music and and I do all these things, but deep down inside, behind the curtains, you know, uh, you're not walking in integrity. You're not you're not doing what what God asked you to do, and that's surrender daily. You know you're still living in the flesh. You're still you're still greedy. You're still hiding uh, those secret sins. You know, and uh, and God wants you to to realize that your sins are forgiven, and because your sins are forgiven, because I love you so much, and I'm I'm willing to forgive you. Don't use that that opportunity, or or knowing that I'm going to forgive you as an opportunity to keep practicing lawlessness because the word says that at the end of the age I will separate the tares from the wheat and the tares will be bundled up and thrown into the fire and there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth alright <clears throat> in verse 57 and 58 it says so they were offended at him but Jesus said to them a prophet is not without honor except in his own country and in his own house now he did not do many mighty works there because of their unbelief a prophet is not without honor except in his own country in the second mission of Jesus to Nazareth his hometown he found that the people's unbelief had not abated. Because of their familiarity with Jesus, the people failed to recognize him for who he is. Their eyes were blinded by unbelief. You know, um, 
a lot of us Christians who have a past a lot of us uh, who live the life of uh, of rebellion a lot of us who uh, walked so many years away from God it's hard for people to believe that God that there is a God or that God is in control or that uh, God can change somebody you know just like the Apostle Paul you know what was he like before he was a Christian he persecuted churches he burned churches he locked Christians up he did really bad and terrible things but yet he's worked for the Lord his work is still evident for the Lord you know he's, he's still moving mountains in God's kingdom by the words that we read in this Bible you know and uh and I want to tell you firsthand that God is real if, if you haven't uh, clicked on my, my testimony if you go to my playlist my testimony is there and you can see that I wasn't always a man of God that I, uh, I, I turned my back on God so many times so many countless times but God is real because I'm here today and I'm and I'm pushing forward for his kingdom and God changes hearts he changes minds he changes lives as long as you you are uh, you 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 have a love for for Christ you accept his his sacrifice but not only that but you apply his word to your life you have to learn to apply this word to your life and how do we apply Matthew chapter 13 is that we continue to believe we continue to know that that Christ is going to come back for his church and it's time for us to get it right it's time for us to repent of our sins it's time for us to confess it to to not be a uh, not be too complacent in this walk you know because this world will tear you down the enemy will tear you down the the enemy roams about like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour don't let him devour you today know that you have victory complete victory in Christ that you can stand firm that you can overcome that you can win you Jesus Christ won this fight on that cross 2000 years ago and that victory that victory that victory in Jesus Christ it's in you all you have to do is accept it all you have to do is believe it confirm it with your mouth believe it in your heart and 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 write it on the tablet of your heart and lay hold of it because the enemy the enemy doesn't want you knowing that you have victory the enemy doesn't want you knowing that 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 you are an overcomer the enemy doesn't want you to know that uh that just by the name of Jesus he will flee from you he doesn't want Jesus coming out of your mouth he doesn't want you practicing godly principles he doesn't want you reading your word he wants your your Bible to keep gathering dust you know and I pray that whoever clicks on this video whoever whoever is uh understanding the words that are coming out of my mouth the words that are being read from this holy Bible you know he only left you basic instructions before leaving earth these basic instructions that we can read that we can soak up that we can apply will keep us from the enemy so there you guys have it Matthew chapter 13 is done and the next video we'll go ahead and jump into Matthew chapter 14 and uh, I pray you guys are blessed that you continue to get into your word that you continue to give your life daily to Christ that you continue to be a light in someone else's life be that beacon of light let Jesus shine through you let people see Jesus when they see you let people hear Jesus when you speak when you put your hand out to help somebody up do it in Jesus name I love you guys God bless you, and we'll see you guys next time. Have a good one.